My story starts in 1988. I was a Peace Corps volunteer in West Africa, plucked from the ivory towers of a privileged private university, and dropped quite literally into a swamp. Fortunately, I was pulled from that swamp and was sent to a rural missionary hospital where my job was to distribute medical supplies. My roommate at the hospital was Dr. Gale, the only Western doctor. And Dr. Gale would come home at lunchtime and tell me all these stories about the vaccine preventable diseases she had treated and all the surgeries she had done that she'd never be able to do back in England. Needless to say, I often didn't feel like eating. But Dr. Gale was passionate about vaccines. She really believed in the power of vaccines to solve all kinds of problems. I wasn't convinced. I thought surely there were so many other things at work in this country that was about to be plunged into a decade-long civil war that vaccines could only play a very minor role. Until one day, I was walking up to the ward and I heard the most horrifying scream that you can imagine. It stopped me in my tracks and sent shivers up my spine. It was the kind of scream, if you've ever been unlucky enough to hear it, you know that the pain and torment stick with you forever. The nurses were walking on eggshells, and there were blackout curtains hung in the windows to provide a little bit of privacy and comfort to a man in great distress. I finished my business as quickly as I could, and at lunchtime I saw Dr. Gale again, and I said, Gale, what the heck happened on that ward today? I heard the most horrible scream coming from one of the rooms. And she said, Anna, that's what I've been trying to tell you. That man is going to die tonight of tetanus, and it's going to be one of the most painful, horrific deaths that you can imagine. Gale, I said, people don't die of tetanus anymore. She said, not in our world, they don't, but they do here. And from that moment on, I began to notice all the people around me that were suffering from vaccine-preventable diseases, measles, mumps, rubella, polio, pertussis. And I began to understand that maybe a central key to solving some of the dire living conditions and horrific outcomes in this country might just be something that we take for granted, vaccines. Vaccines have been hailed as one of the public health miracles of our time, eradicating diseases that once crippled entire countries and kept our grandparents up at night. But for as long as vaccines have been around, there have been people who are skeptical about their use and about their safety. This skepticism borders on being anti-science. The latest round of anti-vaccine sentiment stems from a 1998 journal article published in The Lancet that purported to demonstrate a connection between the measles, mumps, rubella vaccine and autism. Now that study was widely discredited. The author lost his medical license. The Lancet retracted the article. And basically, the scientists came out and said, no, vaccines do not cause autism. But it was too late. Around the world, thousands of people stopped immunizing their children. And what happened? The diseases returned with a vengeance. 2,000 cases of measles in Romania, 2,700 cases in Spain, 15,000 cases in France just last year. We have a social contract with each other to prevent disease. We wash our hands, we cover our cough and sneeze, and yes, we get immunized. Because when a population has a high rate of immunizations, we act as a shield for those among us who are too young and too weak to be immunized. We have a social contract with each other, but if enough people in a community are not holding up their end of the social contract, we arrive at a tipping point where the diseases come back. And we have now arrived at that tipping point. The rate of pertussis in the, in the U.S has increased two and threefold over what it was just last year. Also known as whooping cough, it is the babies among us who are at most risk because they get the disease from us and they could very well die from it. So what am I after? In a word, if I could sum up what I'm after, that word would be nothing. 
when the CDC comes to measure vaccine preventable diseases in our community, I want us to report nothing. But nothing takes collective action. So do people die of measles in our community? The answer lies with you, and you, and you, and you, and all of us. I think we should all band together to make sure nothing ever happens here. Thank you.